Hello, I'm Amy the Bunny Lady, and this is my partner, Elusive. Ellie for short, high five. <laughs> Good enough. And today we are going to talk about some of the signs that it, it might be a good idea to stop bonding, at least temporarily. If you are new to our channel, welcome. We give tips and tricks for how to make sure you have a happy and healthy buddy in your home. So if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in, go ahead and click that subscription button and the notification bell next to it so you never miss any of our weekly videos. If you uh, don't know already, I don't. I do have more than just Ellie here. Um, I do have her partner, uh, Teddy. He's actually behind me in front of the curtain back there. <laughs> Boop. Um, and they are successfully bonded. Most of the time, if you give it enough time, rabbits can be successfully bonded. Um, especially if you take the time to introduce rabbits and try to find one that has a compatible personality. However, there are some occasions where it's going to be better to give up the bond either temporarily or just um, decide that these two rabbits don't do well together and will need to live separately. If you are looking for how to bond your rabbits and you need a little bit more information, I have a Bonding 101 video you can check out. This video is not going to go into any of those techniques or anything, it's just after you've been bonding your rabbit, what should you look for to see if this is actually going to work out. The first sign that you really need to consider giving up on this bond is when one of the rabbits gets hurt. Especially if it's a serious injury that's going to require some time for the rabbits to recover. We always try to prevent this from happening, of course, but since rabbits can be very aggressive and territorial towards any new rabbit that they share a space with, this is a possibility. It is something that can happen when trying to bond two rabbits. And unfortunately, if it does happen, that means that it is so much less likely that the rabbits are going to be able to be bonded in the future. Because rabbits actually have pretty decent memories. They will remember that this other rabbit is what caused them an injury. They will remember that bad blood now that they have between each other. If your rabbits do get in a fight and one of them does get hurt, then you really do want to pause, at least for now, pause and keep them separate. But this is a bond that might not end up working out overall. A second reason is if one rabbit is just too anxious around the other. Usually this will happen because the other rabbit is kind of a bully. The bully rabbit might try to chase them away from getting at the food because the, the more aggressive, more dominant rabbit will always want it first and won't let the other rabbit come near it until they're done with it. So then the more submissive rabbit gets anxious and then they get, if they get so anxious that they can't like live naturally, like they can't do anything that they have to do without essentially getting permission from the bully rabbit, from the more dominant rabbit, then this is a bond that really isn't working out right now. Um, it's just not a good dynamic to have between the rabbits because I mean, the point of bonding rabbits is to make them happier together. And obviously one of these rabbits is not happy in this situation. If they're too scared to do the things that they need to do to take care of themselves, when they're around the other rabbit. Even if neither of the rabbits gets hurt and neither of the rabbits is really, is being majorly aggressive towards each other, if one of them is still too anxious, then that's something that you probably want to give up on or at least wait until you've been able to help this, the second rabbit, the gain confidence so that they're not going to be too scared around the dominant rabbit. So that is um, a second reason why you might want to give up on a bond either temporarily or just they live, they live separately all the time now. The third reason we're going to talk about is when it has been many, many months that you're bonding your rabbits and you haven't seen any improvement. Now it is normal for rabbits to take a number of months. Typically a bond will take anywhere from two weeks to two months, but taking longer than that is something that happens and that's normal. So what you're looking for is taking many months but also seeing no improvement. So if it's been three, four, five months and their relationship is still the same as it was at like week two, then that's something that you need to consider at least pausing because something isn't working here. These rabbits are not getting along like you want them to. They're still being kind of aggressive even if they're not hurting each other or they're still pretty anxious around each other. 
typically before it gets to this point, I would recommend like switching it up a little bit. Sometimes shaking your shaking up where you where you're bonding your rabbits, so moving them to a different neutral space or using a different technique, whether going into a smaller space or going into a larger space. Typically, that kind of thing is what I would recommend first. But you know, if you've tried everything and it's still not working, then it could be that just these two rabbits are not compatible and they're just not going to work together. Sometimes it's just a temporary thing. Maybe one of them is just too too young. Uh, sometimes if you try to bond a, a young rabbit that's only like a year old with a, you know, kind of mature rabbit that's at least four or five, sometimes their personalities won't work out right now, but then they will work once the, the young rabbit grows out of their baby energy. So that's something that you can also do is say, okay, maybe right now it's not working because their personalities aren't compatible, but you can try again in the future. And now the other reason that I want to talk about to give up on a bond is actually if you are too stressed to continue. Because a lot of people forget that while bonding rabbits certainly requires the cooperation of the two rabbits, you are also a vital part in helping this to work out. If you're anxious or you're frustrated or you're too stressed, your rabbits will sense that and it will make it a lot more difficult for them to bond. And to be honest, you also have to make sure you look out for your mental health. You have to make sure that you take care of yourself and putting a pause on the bonding and keeping your rabbits separate for the time being or whether for the time being or you know for good that might be something that has to happen while you look after your own mental health now you can always try to pick it back up again once you're in a better space maybe there's like some major project going on at work and you want to wait until after all of that is over to start bonding again that's also a possibility this doesn't have to be forever but you do want to make sure that you think about your own mental state when you're bonding rabbits i've been talking about this but when should you give up and when should you just take a break? Now, the reality is you can always choose to just take a break. You can always choose to try again. Even if your rabbits are, have been super aggressive and actually ended up hurting each other, if you give it enough time in between, like you keep them apart for a year and then try again, there is potential that it can work. If one of the rabbits is anxious now and they just need some time to grow into their own personality on their own, it can work that if you, if you give them a number of months on their own, the bond can work. So there is always the choice. Like you never have to choose to completely give up on your rabbits. There's always the choice where you can try again. However, if the rabbits are happy, like you have them separate and they're you know living by themselves and they're happy, there's no reason to necessarily force them into a stressful situation that they weren't happy before. And maybe this pair is just not compatible. And it's okay to say we're always going to live separate now. That is also an okay decision to make. So it just depends how you are feeling, how your rabbits are feeling, and you know how much of a challenge you're willing to take on. Because in most of these cases, it was difficult the first time around, and it's it's probably still going to be difficult the second time around, if you even if you take a break and try again. So it is going to be a challenge that you're going to have to try and overcome. But if you're willing to take it on, then go for it. But if you're not, then that's also okay. <laughs> if you do choose to keep your rabbits separate full time, you're just not going to try to bond them again. There are actually ways of letting them live kind of separately, but together or separately, but still kind of interact with each other. So the first way to do this is to essentially have your rabbits in one room they can see each other through like a fence in the middle of the room. So pull like a, a exercise pen like across the room, one rabbit gets each side, and make sure obviously that they can't get to the other side and start a fight. But you can do this and the rabbits can both have their own space, but they can also both kind of interact with each other, see each other, and have that kind of socialization even though it is between the bars because you can't trust them to be alone together. You can also do the same thing if they both have their enclosure in the same room. You can let them out one at a time for their exercise time. They can still see each other when they are uh, interacting and it's a way for them to get just a little bit of socialization even if you know they're not actually compatible and you can't trust them to be alone together. There's still like that that other rabbit that they can interact with which is generally considered good for a rabbit's mental health, so that is a possibility. The other thing that you can do is have supervised playtime. So this is for rabbits who 
maybe they don't 100% get along uh, and you definitely can't trust them to be alone together. But if you supervise them and make sure that they don't get into any fights, then they can still interact. This is for scenarios like if the rabbits just occasionally get aggressive with each other, or maybe if this is one of the scenarios where you are just too stressed to keep going with it. You can still give them these play times, let them interact with each other, make sure they don't get into any fights, but then they live in their separate spaces. So this is also a possibility if you can't 100% bond your rabbits and let them live together full time. So you can remember that just because your rabbits are not completely bonded doesn't mean that they can't interact with each other. You just have to make sure that you are able to supervise them close enough that they're not going to get into any trouble. You're not going to get into a fight with each other. Don't forget to check out that Bonding 101 video. And thank you so much for watching. I do hope to see you next week.